So first off, um, there are some navigation changes in the timeline. Previously, um, when you use the scroll wheel on a mouse, the current time indicator would scrub right and left. So now I'm using the scroll wheel, and as you can see, um, the timeline scrolls vertically. In this case, I don't have a lot in the timeline, but if you have a very crowded timeline, it can be handy to be able to scroll up and down easily. If you do, did like the old uh, scrubbing behavior, you can simply hold the Alt key while you use the mouse scroll wheel, and you'll be able to scrub back and forth in time. So that's still available. The next thing is that um, you can right click to navigate. So just like on the canvas, if I right click with my mouse and then I drag side to side and up and down, um, I can move around the canvas. We have a similar option in the timeline now, side to side and up and down in the canvas by right, right dragging with the mouse. Um, this can be handy, again, if you have a very crowded timeline. It's also really handy in graph mode. So if I go into graph mode, um, I can easily navigate around the graph. I can also, so now I'm right dragging to move side to side and up and down. If I use my mouse wheel in graph mode, I actually zoom in, in and out on the graph. So if I want to uh, work on this area here, I can zoom in, move close to it. So it's just a real nice way to move around in graph mode. So let's uh, go back to channel mode. So that's navigation in the timeline. The next thing, um, you'll notice some changes up in this area. Some buttons are gone. Uh, delete, copy, and paste used to be buttons here in the timeline. Things have changed now. Um, previously, let's say I select the points in this object, and I select some keys here. So there was some ambiguity. If I press the delete key now, what should be deleted? the object or the keyframes, and that's why we had a, a button in the timeline that said delete. Now the rule is if you have keyframes selected, they'll be deleted. If you don't, then anything up here will be deleted. So we don't need separate buttons. I can just select keyframes, press the delete key on my keyboard, and the keyframes go away. I'm going to undo now to bring those keyframes back. If I had no keyframes selected, so I deselect them, and I press the delete key on my keyboard again, you see the objects on the canvas that were selected get deleted. So let's undo, bring that back. This is the same for copy and paste. If I select a couple keys here, uh, and I say copy, paste, they get pasted here in the timeline. I'm going to undo that. Um, and so we don't need the copy and paste button. So those have all gone away. That's nice. I think, you know, I, I spent a minute here describing it, but I think it's going to be easier once you start using it. It's just a simple matter. If you select keys, you press delete and they go away. It's, uh, it's just a natural way to do it. And it's a good change. Um, sort of going along with deleting and copying and pasting keyframes now remember their selected state. So if I go in, I select three keys, I do some other editing, I move the shape around, um, do some stuff. I can even uh, jump back in time, create a new layer, you know, do some editing in this new layer, whatever I want. If I go back, the keyframes that were selected on this ball layer are still selected. Um, this is very handy for, you know, editing keyframes later on. You know, certain editing operations would previously deselect these keyframes, which then you'd have to go back and it was cumbersome to select the ones you had before. So this is just a, an improvement again to the timeline. The selected state of keyframes for you scripters out there is also available uh, to Lua scripts. So a script can query which keyframes are selected and maybe operate just on those or, you know, a lot of possibilities there for scripters. I'm going to reset this file here. Okay.
the um, related to the selection state and copy and paste. So if I select a couple keyframes here, copy and paste, the pasted in keys are selected. So I can immediately go in and fine tune them, or if I don't like them, I you know if I don't like the result, I can delete them immediately. Um, or you can copy and paste them multiple times. So copy paste, the new ones are selected. Maybe I'll uh, scale them in a little bit, and I can copy and paste the new keyframes. So that's uh, a little change there that copy and pasting. Um, selects your pasted result. Okay, we have, um, since we removed some buttons from up here, the delete, copy, and paste, we can add some new ones. So here is the default interpolation for uh, any new keyframes that you create in your animation. Smooth is, of course, you know, our common default. Um, we have these other options you can choose as you create new keys, they'll be created with this type of interpolation, whatever you choose here. So now any new keys will be linearly interpolated and go back to smooth. This was in the preferences dialog before, but here's a, a more convenient location for it, I think. This pop-up I'm going to show you in a little while. This is, has to do with uh, interpolation intervals, and I, I'm going to leave it at one and I'll discuss that in a little bit. Let's see interpolation pop-up. The keyframe pop-up menu has a bunch of changes. So when you right-click a keyframe, previously you could choose uh, the, the type of interpolation. There's some new stuff down here. So the first thing is the hold. If you select hold duration, you can now enter a hold value. So this keyframe I'm going to give it a hold of 10 frames and click OK. Now you can see here, this box indicates the hold for that key. This is sort of a new concept in Anime Studio. When you get to that keyframe, normally it would start interpolating towards this next keyframe. However, if you have a hold duration set, it's going to hold still at the value of this keyframe for the hold duration, and then it's going to interpolate to the next keyframe. So in this case, it's 10 frames. Um, I could set it, I could change it to two frames. So now it's just going to hold for a short time and then continue on. Previously, to get this effect, you would need to add a second key here at the end of the hold duration, which is still an option, but the hold duration you know, might be a, a more convenient way to do that. So that's, that's hold duration. Another thing in the keyframe pop-up menu here is a label. So we can color keyframes now. So instead of this default gray, I can color one purple. I can call it, or another one um, green, yellow, whatever. These, uh, these are sort of ways to mark keyframes. So you can if you have uh, important steps in a walk cycle or you know important moments in your animation, you can mark them this way. So to remind yourself when you come back an hour later or days later to an animation you've been working on, you can sort of remind yourself that these are uh, certain keys that you know have particular meaning to you in your animation. Put them all back to gray. Oops. Oh, yeah, I did. Labels, hold duration. Okay, selecting keys to the right. So in this animation, we can see there are quite a few keyframes that we, I can't see them all at once in the window. If I wanted to make some room in between these two keys to, uh, to animate more, it's sort of cumbersome to select the keys, scroll to the right, select more keys, keep going. What I can do is I can right click on a keyframe and say select keys to right. And what that does is it selects all the keys to the right of this keyframe. So as you can see they're all selected here. And then I can just drag them all to the right to make a little more room in between these two keyframes. So now I could go in and I could, um, you know, if I want to 
add more uh, complexity to the path of movement here. So selecting select keys to right is basically a way to push everything off to the right, push everything later in time, and then uh, give yourself some room here to add something in the middle. Or, you know, you could uh, select keys to right and bring them in to compress time there a little bit. Okay, now the interval stuff. I'm going to bring a different file up to show this example. Okay, here I have two layers. They're two identical layers, just offset vertically. And I'm going to, to play the result. See, they just slide from the left to the right across the screen. The second layer, I'm going to select all the keys and set the interval for these keys. Now the interpolation interval is normally one. And what that means is every single frame is going to be interpolated. If I set it to three, let's just look at the result and then I'll explain what's going on. The top one now you can see is moving uh, not as smoothly as the bottom one. Let's rewind and play again. So the top circle here is interpolating, is animating on threes. So this is something that uh, traditional animators will be familiar with, animating on twos or threes. Um, it's a way of, of changing the timing, um, the smoothness, the interpolation of objects without having to add a whole bunch of other keyframes. So for example, you might want a very smooth camera movement at 30 frames a second but your character animation, maybe you only want at 12 frames a second to sort of give it a, a, a hand-drawn or a more low-tech kind of look. And so that's a simple matter here of setting the interval to whatever you want. I can set it, uh, say, 6. Now it's going to be, you know, quite rough. It's following the same path, and it uh, it's it's not destructive in any way. It hasn't changed or modified any keyframes. Um, it just changes the way that it interpolates between keyframes. So I, I'm doing this for all the keyframes on this circle. You can also do it uh, for any particular keyframe. So you can change it at any point in the animation. I'm going to do six here to make it really obvious. But that's just this keyframe. This one is still at one, so when I play it, it's going to move smoothly here, and then it's going to start becoming kind of rough. So let's play smooth, rough. I can also look at this in graph mode, and you can see here, it's smooth here where it's interpolating on ones, animating on ones, and then here it's going on sixes, so it's sort of this stepwise movement. I told you I'd come back to this menu here. This is just um, a way to set the default. So if I, you know, normally I think you'd want to leave this on ones, not even worry about it, but for, you know, certain occasions when you know you want to uh, animate on threes, you just set it to three, and then whatever you do from that point on, uh, as you add keyframes, those keyframes are becoming uh, sort of stepwise animated on threes. I'll set it back to one so that my animation will be smooth from now on. But that's, you know, another handy tool in the new timeline. 